Howdy folks, we're back at it at another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be making some mountains. Uh, I've just added this uh, here keyboard layout that you can see. Um, you won't be able to see it on your Blender screen. I'm just having it for this uh, recording here so that you can see when I push a button, which button I'm pushing, which is going to be handy for you later because we're going to be doing a lot of button pushing today. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, of course, we've already changed our inputs is change, well, we're going to delete this cube here because we don't need that. And then we're going to change here to Cycles Render. Okay, and that's going to be really important today. I told you to do that before, but it's actually going to become important in today's lesson. So, I'm going to go through this first part of this lesson really quickly. You've done this about three times now, so you should be able to get this pretty well. But I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to scale it up, go all the way to the edge of my grid, and then I'm going to go into edit mode with tab. I'm going to subdivide it, W, each time to get to that. It'll take about that many little things there. And I'm going to deselect it with A, so zoom out a little bit so I can see it a little better. And now we have a plane to work with. And then we talked last class about proportional editing. So I've got vertex selection mode here on the corner. I'm going to select a couple of these vertexes. Ordinarily, I'm just going to grab and pull up, but that just looks terrible uh, when I do it without proportional editing. So I'm going to press O to get into proportional editing. Select smooth, grab, and using my mouse wheel, pull it up a little bit. And press Z to lock it in. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull up a few um, mountains here. We're going to need a good size sort of mountain to play with today so that we can do today's tutorial. Pull some up there. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what was in the last video. I'm going to run a little stream through the middle there. Pull that way in. I guess we'll have some, you know, random humps all over the place here. I like that one there. Grab it there. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to pull this one up with my mouse a little further. Okay, so we have some mountains there. And that looks a little bit too rounded, too smooth. So I think I did this before, but we're going to change our editing proportional falloff mode to random. And then when we grab it and pull it down or up, it's going to randomize it a little bit, creating a bit more of a look of an actual mountain. So it's important that you're in vertex selection for this, otherwise it starts to get kind of weird and funky. Also notice that I am locking it every time to the Z axis so we get a more uh, interesting look. Uh, otherwise, it starts to go sideways on you because you don't really know what mode you're actually in. Oh, that's starting to look pretty neat. That one there is maybe a bit too extreme, so I'm going to drop it down. Same with this one. And I'm not going to spend too long on doing this. Go back to uh, smooth mode here. Zoom in, pan up. And I'll grab this. Oops, that's the wrong button pull it over to make a more steep kind of cliff, pull that one over, just do some kind of cool things here, make it look interesting and extreme. Okay, um, just about done here. Kind of want to make a really tall mountain on one of those sides here, so let's just choose this guy here. Let's pull this way up. Now we have a really funky looking mountain. All right, so there we go. We made a sort of mountain scene. Uh, I'm going to go ahead to face selection mode. I'm actually going to subdivide some of these faces a bit more because I'm going to play with them later. Subdivide with oh, see that one didn't subdivide because it's too irregular. So is that one. So I can go here into my knife tool, which I think I taught you before, and we can manually slice it using the using the um, enter button and now we can just make our own faces wherever we want 
you could have a face. You can have a face too. Do you want a face? Have a face. Okay, so that's still not exactly uh, very organic looking. A really good way to make everything look organic. Select everything here. And we're going to come and we're going to triangulate the mesh, which I think I showed you before. Control T. Now we have a bunch of triangles here, which just looks a little bit better for the low poly look we're going for. Okay, so that's pretty neat. And I'm going to show you how to color this today. Okay, so Blender, we don't color. We add and assign materials. And the reason why we do this is Blender is a much more powerful program than just a, um, a program to make models. You can actually animate with it. You can um, make objects for video games, things like that. And the difference between that is that there's not just colors. There are also materials. So, for example, you can make windows. You can make uh, metallic surfaces. You can make uh, glossy things. You can make a sheet of ice that reflects a little bit. So that's why it's important not to just color it. Think of it as a series of materials. So the material mode is a whole different mode. If we haven't talked about many of these modes right now, we've just been in the same one this whole time. But the material mode is this one here. It looks a little circle. It's not the same as the earth circle over here, so don't do that one. It's the material. I can hover over it and see it's a material mode. So we're going to click on the material mode here. Now we have a different kind of screen we've never seen before. We're going to make a new material by hitting new. There we go. Right now everything is white. Uh, we're going to call this material forest and here's our color here just leave this for now the default which is diffuse bsdf that's just the basic um, solid color and we're going to come in here we're going to make a green this is a really light green this is a color wheel don't know if you know about color wheels uh, pretty basic uh, your uh, um, primary colors are in there mixed with the sort of colors between but not only do you have the RGB color wheel, but you have what's called a value slider. So you can add darkness and lightness to that color by pulling this down. So we're gonna to go to a down kind of forest green. And what we could do at this point is with our forest, go into face selection mode, and we could go in holding the shift key for different faces, and we could manually assign those faces to be that color. Why aren't they actually assigned? Well, you have to go to a uh, different view mode, the material view mode to see them, but that's not exactly what we're wanting to do here uh, because I can do it a lot faster showing you a different way. But first we gotta make our various materials that we're gonna want. So we're gonna assign, or sorry, we're gonna create a new uh, one here, a new material. Uh, that's not what I wanted. New. We're gonna create, oh, I lost my forest. Mist mistakes happen, folks. Go come in here again, make that green, make it darker, there we go. And we're gonna create a new material. <laughs> okay, there we go, I lost them before. Um, no, hold on here, new forest green. Okay, good. Add a new material. Here we go. That's how to do it. New. And we're going to come here and we're going to make a sort of stone color. So we're going to come in and we're going to want a um, sort of dark grayish color. There we go. We'll call that stone. And we want to come in and make snow caps for our little mountains as well. So let's make new material of snow uh, and we're gonna change that to white it already is uh, we could come in at this point and sort of create a new type of material but we'll do that maybe in a different um, section you can make it sort of glassy or something like that um, but we're just gonna play around with a diffuse BSDF right now uh, because otherwise it's just gonna get uh, kind of messy we might play around with some uh, water effects in class. You can make a lake or something like that. But for now, just leave it as diffuse BSDF. Okay, 
So we have our mountain scene that we want to color. So let me show you how this works. Got our three colors that we want to use. We're first going to talk a little bit about how computers see the world. So you, as a person, when things are closer to you, they are bigger. Now that sounds really obvious, but that's not necessarily how computers see the world. Computers see the world in a way uh, that makes it easier um, for us to do this next thing. So we're going to change our view modes. Our view mode here currently is user perspective view mode, but we're actually going to enter a new view mode. And we're going to do that on the number pad. Those of you with laptops, um, you're going to have to let's see, how would you do this? Oh, yeah, over here. So you'd use the view uh, menu over here on the left, but we're just going to use keyboard shortcuts because that's easier for me. Uh, and we're going to enter a different view mode and we're going to go to press five. Now, wherever we are in the screen, things are closer, they're bigger, but they're not distorted by hum human depth perception. Okay, that's five. This is user perspective. This is ortho perspective, orthographic. And that's an easier perspective to use. Just so you know, the other keypad shortcuts you might want to use are two to go to the side, seven to see a top view. So it's really actually quite handy to see the different perspectives with the keypad controls. Um, you can't even see them on my handy uh, keyboard overlay that I, I put on the screen, so it's too bad. But um, we're going to go press in user user uh, ortho we're gonna go a side view then we know a view already that allows us to see through things Do you remember what view allows us to see through things all right yeah I heard it in the back over there that's right the wireframe view so if we press Z we enter wireframe that allows us to see through everything there we go. So it doesn't matter what perspective is. We can see right through the mountains, which is handy. I'm gonna press there. We go back to a side view, and then a new tool you don't necessarily know is the box selector. So this just draws a box over it. So it's handy, just like in Windows when you want to select multiple files or something like that. You draw a box over it. That's what we're gonna do here with faces. So we're gonna press B gets us into box, box selection mode, and we're gonna drag faces over these very top caps over here, and we're gonna, with white, we're gonna assign, we're in face selection mode, don't forget to do that, we're gonna assign snow to those ones. And then we're gonna go to box selection mode again. Oh, actually, we're gonna turn off what we just selected so we don't do it accidentally twice. And we're going to go box selection mode again, and we're going to select it down there, and we're going to assign snow to that one. Then we're going to turn off that, and we're going to go to the bottom ones here, and we're going to assign forest. Okay. So, we're still in wireframe mode. We get out of wireframe mode. Looks the same. So this is a view mode. We're actually going to go back to orthographic, your user perspective, so that we can see uh, sort of how humans would see this and we'll get a cool kind of camera view here so you can see it a bit better there we go okay and we are gonna go into these view modes so you see wireframe is one of the view modes we had there uh, we're gonna go to a different one called material and now you can see that we've shaded these up here now it didn't work perfectly you see that I missed some of those maybe they just weren't facing me the right way so I can go back into my editing mode here I can select that one and instead of um, the forest, I'm going to assign that to be white. So we can come in here and we can sort of correct some of the mistakes. And you might have to do that for the odd piece. Okay, and that's pretty much all I wanted to show you today. We were going, uh, we're going to, in class, talk a little bit about the camera modes. Just make those. We have a camera here. We haven't talked about the camera very much, but uh, if we went back to our object mode, we could see, oh, that looks pretty cool now. Wow, so we're really getting that low poly look. Um, the camera is if you press zero on your number pad, you can see the camera viewpoints. Right now our camera is pointed down there. 
um, we don't necessarily want our camera there so moving the camera around rotating it pointing it somewhere else we'll talk about that in class but just so you know uh, you can do that also a light source finding a light source and putting that somewhere that's up here in this lamp you can change the lamp type you can make it a Sun you can make a spot and that's going to change your um, the viewpoint of your camera as well for when your file is actually rendered which is a whole different thing yeah see there you go zero one percent it's taking me a long time to render because my computer is actually not as good as yours at home I'm sure mine's quite old um, so that's just taking a long time to do that I don't actually want to do that so I'm gonna quit that anyway that's all we have for today we'll talk about rendering cameras and light sources in class see ya